wife and I and our one-year-old son were rear-ended by a semi. When I woke up, my wife had told me that I broke my neck and I might not walk again. The advocates came and I feel like I was put on a hand and just taken. We're still getting better every day thanks to the advocates. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Show is live on your YouTube machine. How the heck are you? Happy Thursday. The interwebs are working again. Yeah. Wait until you hear the internet story we have for you coming up. Uh, I think we have to talk about uh, violence over Guacacholi. There's never a reason to go to Chipotle ever again. We'll talk about that coming up on the Monty Show presented by The Advocates. Theadvocates.com, the best in the business. If you've been in an accident, uh, if you got hurt at work, I have so many people that ask me about workman's comp. And yeah, you can trust your, your, your job. Sure you can. But what's going to happen when you don't get back pay? What's going to happen when you don't know how you're going to pay your rent or your mortgage? Give all of that fear and insecurity to the advocates. And listen, if your your boss and your insurance company is doing it right, the advocates are going to tell you that too. But you have nothing to lose. You can talk to an injury attorney live online, and it won't cost you a dime. At theadvocates.com, make sure you tell them you heard about it on The Monty Show. Uh, hello, Jake. How hello. the heck are you? Better today. Better today. We have had a run of really just bad service. Yeah. yeah from people. Yeah, we, we we have a lot to talk about. So but, not yeah. Amazon, who Amazon just dropped a package at my front door, by the way. So okay. Hopefully okay. by the time the show ends, we don't get porch pirated. Uh so we'll uh chat about that. But let's start with uh what I think is probably um the biggest story in sports this morning and remains. One of the headlines across the sports world, and that is what's going on with Florida State and the ACC. Interesting developments uh, when we were without internet yesterday. Uh, Tuesday in Tallahassee, the ACC and Florida State went head-to-head in front of Judge Cooper. And I think most people would agree, as the ACC won in uh, North Carolina, Florida State, I I guess, won. I don't know that anything was really decided Uh, In this case, other than Judge Cooper denied the stay application by the ACC to delay this this court action by Florida State. Other than that, not much was divided. I don't know that there was a winner or a loser in this case, but certainly it was a good day if you were Florida State because you did not take a loss. The judge did not stay this case. He did not delay it uh, to give precedent to the case in North Carolina. I think there is no doubt Uh, that Judge Cooper was leaning towards Florida State, as much as says so, uh, and talked about how the ACC was venue shopping uh, when it was uh, filing its case before Florida State could do so. Uh, In Florida, they filed in North Carolina, which was his main reason, it appears, for not granting the stay uh, that the ACC was asking for. But I don't know that there was a clear, unequivocal winner in this situation. The good news, if you are Florida State, you did not lose this hearing because that certainly would have made your road uh, to exiting the ACC through court a much steeper, more difficult terrain to navigate. But one thing is very clear, and it's what we've talked about in this Florida State situation versus the ACC for months and months now. Judge Cooper agreed with us and everybody else who has asked the question, if this grant of rights is so bad, why did you sign it? That is the question. That is, in my opinion, the lingering issue for Florida State hanging over their head coming out of court on Tuesday. Judge Cooper said he was troubled by the fact that Florida State put pen to paper on that ACC grant of rights. When Florida State was arguing that its board of trustees was never given an opportunity to review the situation, why then did Florida State sign the grant of rights, Jake? I think that is absolutely the biggest obstacle for Florida State here. Yeah, and without a doubt. I mean, I, I, there's just no getting away from it. There's no the, – the, it, it is the ultimate ace in the hole for anybody arguing against Florida State. And, and, and I think it comes down to 
basic contract law, man. Like, obviously, this is a legitimate contract. It has everything you need for a legitimate contract. And and now we're in a position where you've signed this thing not once but twice. And and it just puts you in a tough position because you you can't you can't say on one hand, hey, like this grant of rights is unfair, but then on the other hand, get away from the fact that you signed it twice. That that's just you're just not getting out from under that. And 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 the problem is is that any judge has an obligation to obviously follow the law and 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 rule uh, on on cases based on what the law says. The law says that that unless you were you were uh, had a gun to your head or were intoxicated or unable to to properly like if you were just impaired in any type of way or forced or coerced to sign this contract, the contract's going to stand up on its merits alone. And that's what I think is the problem for Florida State. They've been trying to get out of this thing for years now. They've been trying to find that the the escape hatch, and they haven't found one. Yeah. So now they've gone to court action. And and the problem is, is I don't, I, I still don't understand what the goal is because I think everybody agrees you're not getting out from under this grant of rights through the court. Hundred percent. So I don't know. Is Florida State simply saying, hey, like we're we're just going to try and make as much noise as possible and you know, then when the court rules against us, then we'll find our next avenue to be a pain in the ass in the ACC. I mean, is that the strategy? Because that's certainly what it kind of seems like, but I, I don't know what else it could be. Well, and I, I think what's clear coming out of this case in Tallahassee the other day on Tuesday was that Florida State's going to argue that they are being unjustly held back uh, by this grant of rights. They, they talked about, um, I believe the language they used was being held hostage um, by this grant of rights, um, the ACC's argument was, well, hey, you can get out of this for, you know, $100, $150 million anytime you want. Uh, but Florida State then said, yeah, but that doesn't get us our TV rights back and it will cost $572 million, half a billion dollars uh, to get out of this grant of rights. And this is where that, this is where that uh, argument comes in because, the attorney for Florida State said, quote, the ACC wants to take the next 12 years of every home game Florida State plays. And you figured, OK, well, you have a very pro Florida State judge here in mm -hmm. Judge Cooper. You would think that that would resonate with the judge. But this is where that question of what did you do? Why did you sign this? And Cooper said that he sided more with Florida State. He made that very clear. Uh, when it came to the issues of the grants of rights, but said, I side with Florida State, but I cannot understand, and I am troubled by putting your signature on that piece of paper. And I don't know how Florida State gets away from that, because I also think there was another really interesting moment when the ACC attorney argued, you've been profiting from this grant of rights for 13 years. And the judge said, well, yeah, that would be true. Uh, and that would be a relevant argument if you were asking for damages, if you were asking for repayment, which the ACC is not. The ACC is simply saying, we want this grant of rights upheld. So it's a really interesting back and forth. And I, I think it is, I think it's really interesting that you're just now making this argument in front of a judge on something that you signed 10 years ago. Well, and I think the terrifying part is like, you've still got, you know, 11 years on this grant of rights left. Like, like obviously for Florida state, you know, in their, you know, when you have their opinion, like it, that's a long time, man. I mean, when, when you're of the opinion that you're suffering and you're being held hostage, 11 years feels like, feels like a long time, given all the change we're seeing in the sport. But again, I, I it's hard for me to, feel sorry for Florida state because of the decision that they made. And, yes. and, and the unfortunate part is the excuse of, well, everybody signed it. It was, it was the accepted amount at the time, but the, the term is too long. And it's like, well, why didn't you make that case before? Where, did you not have the foresight to see that, that, yeah, you know, TV partnerships and the game is going to continue to grow like that was never some trade secret. It's very obvious that that those valuations are going to continue to grow. So it just, I, I, that's why I say, 
when you really get down to the core of this issue, the question becomes, what is Florida State trying to do? Because it seems very clear yeah. they're not getting out of the grant of rights through the court, even when Judge Cooper is like, hey, yeah, I agree with you that the grant of rights is heavy handed and it puts you in a bad spot. No question about it. But I also have to look at the law and say, hey, you signed it not once but twice, man. Like and I think it's also very telling that the judge no commented essentially did not speak to the argument Florida State was making that they are no longer in the decision-making process when it comes to ACC policy. And I think that's a very interesting no comment, if you will, from Judge Cooper, um, who was happy to comment and, and say he was favoring Florida State's position on many things. But how can you legitimately argue that the ACC should allow Florida State to be part of future policymaking when they are so passionately and publicly trying to get out. And I understand why Florida State made that argument in front of the judge, but I think it's really telling that the judge did not have much of a, a feeling on that. That's what I'm saying. It's almost like the judge, like because he's a pro Florida State judge, like empathizes with Florida State and understands yeah. how they feel and, and why they feel the way they feel. But it's it's he he's being held accountable by the law. He I mean he's not he he can't as a judge just overlook the fact that you signed the document and you chose you made a a conscious decision. You didn't have a gun to your head. You weren't impaired. Like there were no issues when you signed it. You made the decision to do this, and now you want out. And that's not how the world works. Because again, if you if, yeah. if let's say the judge were to. To go, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go against the grain and and say that they should be allowed out. Do you understand that 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 basically undercuts contract law for every contract law case there's ever been? I mean, if you start to think about it, you're like, yeah, if he does it here, where else could we have done it? Like, you can't set that precedent. And I know this inflames Florida State fans every time I say this, but this is no different than buying a house. It's no different than buying a car. Just because, just because you have buyer's remorse and you feel like you're not making the money that you deserve or that your competitors are making, that doesn't give you the right to tear this contract up. And it was very clear when you signed this document that it was going to cost you $572 million to get out. And it's the argument they continue to make in court that that's arduous. Well, Sorry, man. Buyer's remorse does not does not work here. It's a contract. Yeah. And the judge, and and I will continue to pat myself on the back. I'll dislocate my shoulder if needed. You were not under duress when you signed this contract. Thanks. You did not have a gun to your head. No. You did not, you were not under the influence. You signed this contract and for 10 years said nothing about it. Well, and I think to that end, there was a, an article that came out recently that talked about the fact that, you know, Bobby Bowden, uh, like 10 years ago or whatever, did an interview where he talked about how, hey, like, if, do you remember the original reason why Florida State went to the ACC versus the SEC? Because they had a choice. If you go back and you look, they had a choice. From the, when they were leaving independence, what conference they were going to join. Yes. And the choice was the SEC or the ACC. Bobby Bowden himself said, hey, we went to the ACC because we knew that it was the easier path to go out and win a national championship. We knew that the ACC was not as competitive as a conference as the SEC even at that time. So what's so incredible to me is that your very position in this conference is based on the fact that you wanted a free pass to a national championship, and now it's not working out for you. Yeah, I think, and and on the screen is what you're referencing here, um, where essentially Bobby Bowden told Paul Feinbaum in 2015 that he felt, quote, it was too difficult to win through the SEC uh, to win a national championship. He also told 247 Sports in 2019 that he thought FSU would choose the SEC, but, quote, the administration, the president, and others wanted the ACC, which really was better for us. It would have been hard wading through the SEC. So to your point, Jake, yeah, there's no question 
that Bobby Bowden was unequivocal in that they took the easy route. They chose the ACC because it was the easier path to a national championship. So you chose the easier path. You got what you wanted. Then you wanted to continue that easy path, right? You were like, okay, cool. We're established. Let's continue it for quite some time. And now the landscape has changed in a way that you didn't foresee coming. You're pissed about it. You want out of the contract. And and this judge, I'm telling you, does not have a way to be like, yeah, dude, you signed this contract twice, but we're going to ignore that fact and just yeah. let you do what you want. That's not how the law works, <laughs> no. dude. That, that's not possible. And Florida State fans can get upset. Get upset with your administration. It's, again, not to say the same thing over and over. They're the ones that made these decisions. Like, it's incredible to me in, in today's world that we want to have it both ways. Like, we don't care if 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 the law says it's wrong or or even if you take the law out of it and you just go to the right thing to do. We don't give a damn about that. We just want the easy way. We want it to be as easy for as long as possible. And then if e if easy changes in a way that negatively impacts us, then then we want out of the agreement. And and that's what's hard for me. It's like this Florida State situation is different from the Michigan situation in the sense that the Michigan situation is just, hey, who did what? What illegal activity took place? And what what's the discipline going to be? Right? That's that's what the Michigan situation was. That wasn't a contract law situation. This is a contract law situation. Hey, two parties agreed to something, and now one of those parties wants out. And by the way, I don't hear enough people talking about the fact that if the judge were to rule in Florida State's favor at the end of the day, you're not only ruling in their favor, you're ruling to tear down the ACC, which I think is another responsibility this judge has. Well, and I think he he is aware of that. I think he's he is painfully aware of that. And to put a bow around this, it's Florida State. Yeah. Like this is a brand. This is a a a football powerhouse. And and you're telling me that the best that a, a a heritage brand like Florida State can do is go into court and argue we don't like it anymore, so we want out. And I, I just I'm fascinated that this is the position that a program the 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 magnitude of a program with these these levels of success during the Bobby Bowden's era. The heritage. The history, the tradition. Yeah. Didn't think this through. Didn't think, hey, $572 million is a lot of money. Did it never occur to you to do that calculation? <laughs> because that's what it feels like to me. And whether it's Arizona and... Their their two hundred forty million dollar abacus mistake, like the Pac twelve melting down with some of the the foremost academic and 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 educational minds at the helm of that conference, and it completely melted down under incompetence. Are you telling me that that's where Florida State is? Because that's what this feels like. You're not. You're this this case to answer the question on the screen. This case will never be tried in front of a judge or a jury. This is 100%. And I think the judge said this. This is 100% about leverage in negotiations. This case it's, is empty. It is. They, they, this will wind up in the hands of a mediator. This will wind up with a negotiated settlement. And, and I am curious, what happens to Clemson's case? What happens to Clemson's case? Because I think it's going to be very difficult for Clemson. And I feel like Clemson's just along for the ride in this. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see how that situation works out. It's going to be interesting to see when we get to a negotiation, you know, like all this ridiculousness about how, um, you know, the, they're going independent. Florida State's going independent this coming season. They're not going independent. They're not, you're not getting out of the ACC to go independent. Well, and I think the issue is, is that this whole situation puts the ACC in a spot where, where, where they're, they're not incentivized to help you. And, and I keep saying this, but like, you're not doing yourself any favors if you're Florida State to get what you want 
by trying to bulldog the ACC in a courtroom, right? Or by trying to use the courtroom for leverage because the concept of leverage here doesn't really exist. What leverage does Florida State really have, right? In order to have leverage, you got to be able to say, hey, dude, if you don't do A, B is going to happen. Well, sorry, Florida State, you don't really have a B or an A. That's the issue. And so when I when I think about a, a mediator situation and these two sitting down at a table and figuring it out, for the ACC, there is no best case scenario when it comes to Florida State because if they get out in any form or fashion, right? Let's say you got out and you paid a fee and Florida State retains its TV rights. Do you know what that does to the ACC? Do you understand that that puts the ACC at incredible risk? Because now we have precedent to get out of the grant of rights. Now it's like, okay, well, AC, the four state did this to get out of the grant of rights. Yeah. We're UNC. You really telling me that we got to pay, we got to pay and do as much as they did? I think if like, Florida State winds up, I mean, I mean, if we're talking about, if we are talking about moving other members, the longer this goes on without resolution, the better it is for Florida State. Because the longer this goes on, the Notre Dame's, it, it really, what are we even talking about? North Carolina, mm -hmm. because I think, again, this conference lives and dies on Tobacco Road. Uh, the longer this goes on, North Carolina, North Carolina State, other influential members, which I don't think Clemson is one of, the Dukes of the world, then the Notre Dames, then the, that's when they're going to start getting antsy. And I, that's the problem for Florida State with this ruling, if you will. It's awesome that the judge said, if you're Florida State, it's awesome the judge didn't delay the this movement by Florida State. Great. I'm all I'm all about that. That's a win. The problem is he sided with the ACC on the fact that Florida State signed this contract. Get to, to negotiating. Get to a settlement. Move the ball down the road. That's if you are Florida State. You only have two options. You don't want this to go to court. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, in other people's opinions, I've asked about this. They can't go to court and win a contract argument. They just can't. No. There's no way that they're going to be able to win a contract argument. And all this is, is leverage at the, the, the mediator's table. That's all this is. So get about your business. If you are really serious about bringing an end game to whether it's just your situation in Tallahassee or the ACC in general, get to it. Because the longer this goes on, the worse it is for the ACC, in my opinion. Yeah. Because I think if, if this lingers through the summer, at some point, North Carolina is going to have to move. At some point. Because they're already trying to churn. They're chumming the waters, if you will, calling, talking, trying to form alliances in this conference. And I have to believe now that they already have a plan. I think 99% of this is already been talked about and, and mapped out. It's simply a matter of what's going to trigger people to move and in what direction will they move. Yeah. But it, it's plain and simple. It is, it is just as, I don't think this is complicated. I think in so many cases in this life, we try to make shit complicated. This is really simple. Well, and the contract is the purest form of that, right? Like, it's not complicated. It, the contract says what it says. It's got everyone's signature on it. There was an agreement that took place. Like, don't, don't confuse this. Florida State agreed. They said, yes, we agree to this. Not once, but twice. You're not getting away from that. And, and for me, if I was on the ACC side of things, again, I don't even uh, feel like this court action gives Florida State a ton of leverage at a mediator table. Because again, if you're sitting at the table and these two are going back and forth, the ACC is just going to continue to say, okay, cool, you want this? If we don't give it to you, what are you going to do about it? Oh, that's right. Absolutely nothing. You're going to sit here and you're going to continue to make yourself look bad for your next home. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, there's it, just no win here. Yeah, there's no win for anybody. There's no win here. To which I say, if you're Florida State, why are you not going to ESPN? Why are you not going to the TV partners and saying, hey, man, this is our situation. This is what we want to do. What would be the initial opportunities? What would be the initial angles Oof, of possibilities? I think that is a very difficult precedent to set. I well, think you are asking for... It, it just is... 
it is yeah it's it's rough i i think that's very rough and when you again i just go back to contract law because i think that's what this is and i think when you look at what florida state agreed to um a long-term grant of rights that brought them stability that they have profited from and i think that's why it's not accidental what is what is the acc's position you sign this contract you've profited from it and now you want out Mm -hmm. and i think the judge questioned them on the profit angle of it but he also very much leaned in favor of the acc when he said my biggest question is why why is why did you sign this deal I he, he the judge said I'm having trouble getting past the fact that Florida State signed this not once but twice. Yes. Signed this deal. That's very difficult to get away from, man. And that's why I think he got to get to negotiating. Yeah, I mean the fact that you extended the deal is I mean that's I I don't I don't know how you're going to spin that. I mean I just I don't know how you get around it. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. It'll be interesting to see where we, where we go from here. Let's get your thoughts on it. As always, presented by Prize Picks, PrizePicks.com. Um, okay, are we? Do we have to do the Masters, right? I mean, on you, have picks, you have to. You have to. Like we have. Like let's see. Let's see what Prize Picks rolled out for Tiger's number today. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I'm not a. Um, I am not a. I'm not a believer in Tiger Woods winning the Masters. I uh, can he make the cut? Yes, he has, and he has talked about, and everybody who has watched Tiger this week at the Masters has talked about his swing now accommodates that that frozen in place heel, right, and ankle that he has, and he is now he is now hitting the ball as far as he was before the car accident. So there is that's a lot of really good news, right? Um, but I'm not somebody that can get on board with. I'm not somebody that can get on board with that. I, I am truly not. Does he survive physically? Because that's the other thing. That's the biggest. Well, he's also said that he has stopped using a, a golf cart in practice rounds mm-hmm. because he is trying to condition. For those of you who don't know, Tiger Woods was in a major car accident. Um, his right ankle is fused. It does not bend. It does not move. Uh, it is locked in place for the rest of his life or as long as he has that ankle. And it creates a lot of problems. One of the problems it creates is it creates significant knee and calf pain. Um, As he walks more, um, he he has significant pain. And it impacts his ability, uh, or previously, it has impacted his ability to play 72 holes, which which is what you're doing, right? You're playing four rounds of 18 holes. He's fine on Thursday and Friday. It's at the end of Saturday that he is really unable uh, to continue forward. He says that he has changed his fitness regimen, and you know he is a voracious uh, workout guy. Yeah, uh, He is somebody that trains multiple times Do a day. Do you even lift? And he does. He has trained uh, hard to be able to walk for 72 holes of golf. He has uh, stopped using a cart when he's preparing for a tournament now um, because what he had been doing is playing golf, not competitive golf, but playing practice rounds using a golf cart. Now he has stopped doing that, and it's forcing him to walk more. Well, and I think people are like, oh, well, Monty, it's just golf. You're just walking. What's the big deal? Well, when you have a frozen ankle, a fused ankle, which is what Tiger has, the Achilles, the muscles in the bottom of his foot. One of the issues he had in the Bahamas was the the musculature in his foot was very painful. The the tissue on the bottom of his foot just... Yeah. I think he, he likened it to walking on glass. Every step was piercingly painful. Um, I, I, I don't know how you fix that, right? Uh, so... Well, it just sounds like a situation for Tiger where, you know, again, this is a guy who's 48 years old now, you know, so obviously he he he's not incapable. I mean, his body can still do things, but I think that at that age, when you're playing professional golf and you've played the amount of golf he's played, you have to give your body the chance to ramp up and you have to, to say, hey, okay, 
If I if I'm going to be able to walk 72 holes, I got to do that in practice. I and probably what he should be doing, and I don't know, maybe he is. I have no idea. But you should be training for like five days in a row, right? Hey, like let's walk 18 holes and build up to that and teach my body how to get comfortable walking that far. How to deal with how this. to deal with this because you know again when Tiger when his body is there for him, he's going to be competitive. I'm with you. I don't think that this is a guy that's going to win the Masters this year. Best case scenario for me is a top 10 finish. That's best case, all world, everything's perfect scenario for Tiger. Would be a top 10 finish. He looks good. Like maybe the putter comes get comes alive during the weekend and he picks up some strokes. Like that would be best case scenario. But I think this Masters needs Tiger not to flame out on Friday. A hundred percent. Like this Masters needs Tiger to go through it because what I think he is needs happen, to play the weekend, dude. What I think is going to happen, not to go off on a whole thing about the Masters here, but I do think Scotty wins this Masters, and I do think that that the the tournament itself to keep the heat needs Tiger at least in contention within like, 10 shots of the yeah lead. like you need to be at least reasonably competitive all right here's what i have on prize picks prizepicks.com uh make sure you download the app use the promo code monty m-o-n-t-y monty to get 100 percent deposit matching uh which means you put in 50 they'll give you 50 dollars more up to 100 dollars. so you can put in 100 dollars. they'll give you 100 more it's one of the best deals in in fantasy sports hook it up prizepicks.com so the the way that prize picks works for instance, Tiger Woods today on strokes is 74 and a half. You simply have to say he'll have more than 74 and a half strokes or less than. I'm less than 74 and a half strokes for Tiger today. I am less than 72 strokes for Rory McElroy today. And I am less than 73 strokes for Justin Thomas today. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you every day, my formula on price picks is really simple. Three selections. You take three selections, NBA, Major League Baseball, golf. You can mix and match. You can play all golf. I'll have all golf today, and then I'll have a baseball, basketball one as well. I always play flex, so I need three guys. I'm going to flex play it, which means if I if I get two of three, um, I, I, win, uh, I win my money. If I get three correct, I win two and a half times my money. So uh, I am going to put up a $25. Um, I'll put up a $25 uh, bet to win $56.25. And, and when you're doing golf, I would highly encourage you just to do a quick Google search for the course that they're playing that week and understand what par for a round is. So at yes. Augusta National, par is 72. So when you're looking at prize picks for golf, and it says 74 and a half strokes. What is Price Pick saying there? They're saying, do you believe Tiger Woods is going to be two over or three over when he finishes his day? So I'm taking Tiger Woods to be two over, less than 74 and a half strokes, right? Whereas with Scotty, right, his number 71. So Augustus or Price Picks is saying, hey, we think this guy is going to be one under or better. And I'm saying I think he's going to be two or three under, even with the conditions today. So yep. with golf, you got to look at that stuff and understand what the course, par for the course would be. 100%. Eric and Raleigh, first one in today. You can't blame Florida State, though. FSU is absolutely correct to try and get out of the contract. Bit from a business perspective, absolutely. If I'm Florida State and... I can I probably hold Florida State in higher esteem than most people. I believe that Florida State is it's akin to a blue blood, right? Like it is a it is a behemoth program that should compete for a national championship every single year. Is this grant of rights a roadblock to that? It's not a roadblock to that. They have done a lot of damage to themselves. Poor coaching decisions. Jimbo Fisher, I think, was not good, in my opinion. Um, I don't, I think Norvell has done a, a, an admirable job. Now you've got to build depth and, and compete, right? And winning now is absolutely imperative, mm -hmm. but you sign that piece of paper and I would be trying to get out as well, Eric. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Uh, Mike Smith, they will have the money because the money will not be the amount that the ACC wants. No, it will be significantly less than 572 million. I think they are going to, my opinion is 
there are only two outcomes here, and not one of them involves a judge or a jury. Mm -hmm. The ACC melts down, or Florida State negotiates an exit, and then the ACC melts down. A any way you like it. Because if, if Florida State winds up getting out, that's when, or if they get close, and what I think will happen is Florida State will begin negotiating. They will tell other partners in the league, hey, here's where we are, and the league will melt down because Florida State doesn't want to pay a penny. Right. That's ultimately the goal here. We want out, and we don't want to have to pay for it. We don't want to have to abide by the terms of the contract we signed. That's where Florida State's at. Which is just incredible. Hey, but if you're going to fight, you might as well fight for your ultimate outcome, right? Yeah. Yeah. You chose violence. Okay, let's fight to the death then. I'm not paying you a penny. Yeah. Great. I think you go to mediation, you get down the line a little bit, and you start leaking information. Hey, uh, Bubba Cunningham, North Carolina. Yeah, we're uh, right now, we're in the 200 millions. We're in the 200 millions. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we've we got it down to 175 million. Whatever the numbers are, let's say. Because right. I think if you're at 572, if you're the ACC, you're probably willing to, my guess is you're somewhere around 300 million. That's a number I've heard repeatedly, that the ACC had settled for 300 million. More than half. Okay, right. great. Right. All right, hey, we're down to 400. We're down to 395. We're down to 360. You're just going to keep leaking that. And you are going to say to the people in this conference, you're not getting out for less than 300 million. Look at where we are. Let's all band together here, Notre Dame. Jack Swarbrick's gone. Let's all band That's together insane, here. Dude. You're a TV guy now, Mr. Notre Dame athletic director, which he is. Uh, let's all band together here. I think that's how you find 10 teams to get out of this league. I'm, that's what I'm saying. If you're the ACC, you're not budging even a little bit. You're nope. not You're not doing a damn thing. And, and, and that's, that's my... I wouldn't. That's my, my point about the whole negotiating thing. What is there really to negotiate? Because the ACC is not going to move. No, I agree. Hero 75 for $5. Good morning, Hero. Good to see you. What was clear to me, the judge was telling both Florida State and the ACC to just go into a room and find a settlement. Be done with it. I would agree with that, which is, again, I think not what Florida State wants. They want to they want to win a case. I don't think that any judge is going to want to hear this case, truthfully, because it's a no win for anybody. And I think judges are smart about that stuff. Yeah. And I think you are having a judge that sits down the street from Florida State's campus. Tell them, sit your ass down at a, at a mediator's table and let's work this out. And I think that's that's what you continue to see there, where these cases go. And I think that that's a very difficult outcome. Is Florida State really going to wind up kicking down $300 million? How is that a win in any way, shape, or form for Florida State? It's not. I don't see how that's a win. You can't tell me that doesn't put them in a tough spot. Okay, let's say they do kick down $300 million, just as a just as a hypothetical. How is that a win for the ACC? It's not. It's a loss. How's that a win for Florida State? It's not. It's a loss. It's a loss. This is lose-lose. And that's what every Florida State fan who's pissed off in, in our comment sections, I'm just asking you, what's a win look like here? The only winning scenario is, yeah, you guys walk away, don't pay us a penny. <laughs> and that's never going to happen. Yeah. The conference either melts down, in my opinion, the conference melts down or Florida State stays in the lead. Because they're not... You can't pay $300 million in this economy, in this climate. You don't ever make that money back. It's gone. Light it on fire. It's gone, dude. Yep. It, it I just don't, I don't know how you fix that. I, I truly do not. Yeah, there's definitely no convenient ending to this situation. That's for sure. And it'll be interesting to see where ultimately this judge comes down on this case. He clearly denied the stay. So this case is not going to be delayed. But he clearly wants them to negotiate. And I think that little that little dab of salt, Salt Bay Judge Cooper yes. threw in there at the end when he talked about the fact that he's stuck on them signing this contract. <coughs> go get in a, go sit down and talk about it cuz I think it's an, not favorable. It's not a good outcome for Florida State. No. It, it truly is not. You know, Eric and Raleigh, the ACC is just ruining Florida State and 
Clemson, I, I I don't think they're ruining them. I think it's making it very difficult. No, I think I think they've ruined themselves when they sign the contract. I think that you put yourself in a yeah uh, a, a, a terrible position to have flexibility or maneuverability in the marketplace when you signed an 11 year, or I guess at that time it would have been a 15 year deal. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know anybody, you know, who, who walks into a negotiating room and says, yeah, this seems like a good idea. Let's sign for 15 years. The only, the only deals that get done for 15 years are like staple center level deals where you're putting a sign on the side of a building or but something. Why not? Why not take, why not take the route of the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big Ten, hell, the Big 12? Why not take the route of your fellow power conferences and make money outside of your grant of rights? Yeah. I, I don't understand it. Go make money outside of your grant of rights. Create revenue streams. If you are, there's been so much division in the ACC that you don't have you know, you don't have the the Greg Sankey model. You don't certainly, and if you compare the ACC and the Big 12 as often as done, you don't have Kansas City. You don't have big festivals. You don't have concerts. You don't have a commercial division. You don't have separation between ACC basketball and ACC football, where they're both independent business units that are making money. If I'm if I'm the ACC and if I'm Florida State, I'm trying to figure out how to make more money without giving away three hundred million dollars or a blue blood brand. Yeah. But at this point, there's so much vitriol about it that I, I just think we can't see the trees from the middle of the forest. And and I, Florida State deserves better than the situation they put themselves in. Florida State fan deserves better than the situation they find themselves in. So what are you going to do to get out of it? Yeah. It's not pay $300 million. That's go directly to jail because you're paying $300 million. You are not winning on the field anytime soon. You are not. I, I just don't see. Yes. Mark Hales. Basic contract law says regret is not a defense. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> that is exactly right. It, it, there's, there's just no way to. Yeah. There's no way around that. Uh, Luke Fletcher, good morning. Please keep in mind that Judge Cooper may yet determine this case needs to be heard in North Carolina anyway. I think he made his position on that pretty clear. Yeah, I don't I don't I mean, see. When he talked, I believe the term he used was forum shopping. Yeah. Um, what that basically means is he's accusing the ACC of saying, hey, you went to a county, and he said you went to the county level instead of the state level, and you filed this in a place that you thought you could win. Which, okay, that's certainly one way you could look at it. But I think they filed it where the ACC is housed in Mecklenburg County, which is where I would have filed it. Yeah, the term forum shopping is one that's that's used regularly in in the court of law. People people do this because they want to get an advantage. And yes. And so basically what you know the the concept Judge Cooper's trying to put forth here is that is that the cases will run concurrently next to each other. Right. Like, hey, you know, you're you're going to have, you know, basically they're going to run side by side. That's essentially where we're at with it. There hasn't been yeah. a definitive, hey, it should be here. Or it should be there. Right now we're just at they're going to be heard. Both cases will be heard in both locations. And I think that that's fair. I, I mean, I, I, and I do think. Well, I, I just think that that it's it. Yeah. They the ACC filed first. Yes, the ACC is held in in North Carolina, obviously. So, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe that's where this should be heard. But you know, obviously, FSU doesn't want that to take place, and a pro FSU judge isn't exactly gonna just you know jump for joy to have it leave the state but of Florida. I, I, again, I I think this is all semantics. I think it this is all for. But leverage. isn't that the whole case? Isn't isn't the whole this whole thing is like semantics? Whether whether it's it what the ACC did, it whether is. it's what Florida State's doing, like the whole thing is a puppet show to try to get done what each of these two groups wants to get done. And and that's why I'm struggling with what what ultimately happens here because I don't even believe if they sat down at a table you'd get a resolution. I don't believe that that you you would get the Texas and Oklahoma situation that played out in the Big 12 because no. that's not what Florida State is asking for. You know, Texas and Oklahoma understood, "Hey, we signed a contract. We just want to leave a year early." 
right? We just want to leave earlier to get to where we want to go. How can we get that? And done? here's a check to ease the, to grease the skids. Yeah. So the conversation with those two was always, Hey, we know we need to pay. What are you, uh, is there movement on that price? A little and bit? it's, this is the argument that so many Florida state fans want to make. And it's just, there's no argument here. Oh, well look at the PAC 12, look at USC and UCLA. Hey, look at Oklahoma and Texas grant of rights were ending. Yes. Grant of rights were ending. They were, they, the, the, the PAC 12 melted down because a contract ended and its members decided not to sign a new one. You not only signed a contract, but then signed an extension. It's a completely different argument. Yeah. There's no, there is no precedence for any of this shit. I hope people realize that. Like there's no, you've never seen a grant of rights adjudicated by a judge or a jury. You've never seen this before. And I don't think we'll see it now. I don't. And if I'm Florida State, I am really concerned that I can't win this case. When a judge in Tallahassee says, yeah, I'm kind of concerned that guys signed that contract. <laughs> that's that's I feel concerning. Like when a judge says, I'm kind of concerned, that's like a nice way of saying, hey, yeah, I can't really go against that. So you might want to find another way. <laughs> like, Yeah, I I think that's the, the most concerning part of what he said. Um, I, I don't. Mm. Towards the end of the hearing, Cooper said that he sided more with Florida State when it came to the issue with the grant of rights, but is still, quote, troubled putting signature on it. Uh, I mean, there's just no way to get away from it. Yeah. I mean, and it's the truth. It's it's uh, it's unfortunate and it's ugly. Mike Smith, Mountain Mama. Look at that glorious beard. Yeah. God damn. Uh, FSU will leave the ACC. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how much. I do not think it will be even close to what the ACC is claiming it wants. I don't think Florida State singularly is able to leave the ACC. I don't think they can pull that off. How? What would that even look like? It would look like the ACC giving in. And my other question is, where does the SEC come into this? Because I don't think Florida State's a fit or wants the Big Ten. I think Florida State, and I think the statement that you brought up so so perfectly, Bobby Bowden freely admitted Florida State's m brain trust chose the ACC because it was the easier route. You really want to go into the Big Ten? You really want to go into the, you're not better than Ohio State. You're you're not. Well, and I think to the, to the Bobby Bowden thing, they never even considered the Big Ten at that time. Now, obviously, the Big Ten has grown and it's changed a little bit. And obviously, you know, we've got a bunch of new teams coming in. So and in two months, it's going to get significantly more difficult to win that league. Yeah. When when you have Oregon football coming in, do you guys see yesterday was Dan Lanning's 38th birthday? <laughs> God damn. Um, you have you have Oregon SC. You, well. UCLA. But I think we can agree and that the UW Big Ten, coming in. Dude, the Big Ten's easier to win than the SEC. The SEC is is a mm, I, I think the uh the the Big Ten is getting significantly better. There's also the Buckeye elephant in the room who are who, who if they don't win the league this year, I don't know that they ever will. No. Cuz they're going to be really talented. Like that league got significantly better. Mm -hmm. Is it better than the SEC in football? I would have to say it's not, but that's just one man's opinion. You had but Texas. It's, it's definitively second. Yeah, you have Texas and Oklahoma coming into that league. Good luck. Good luck. And by all accounts, um, life is very good in Tuscaloosa. I, I mean, they seem to be doing very well. I mean, at that league, the SEC is no cakewalk. Where does Florida State want to go? That's my biggest question. Well, I, I think they want to go to the SEC. I, I I think that Florida State has always seen themselves as an ACC or an SEC team, right? Like, I I think that that's been their narrative. Now, maybe has that changed? Maybe. But but I don't see Florida State all of a sudden waking up and saying, yeah, man, we're a Florida team, but we want to be in the Big Ten, right? We're, 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 we're based in the state of Florida. Our, our next door neighbor, you know, Florida itself uh, is in the SEC. You know, what better way to stoke the flame of rivalry than to share a conference together? It makes perfect sense for them to be in the SEC. The only problem with that is Florida wants nothing to do with that. And how much money are they going to have to rebate? How much money are they going to have to give back to the SEC to get in? Yeah. 
That's because what I'm saying. There's no easy path. Ever. I feel like Florida State fan is just like, all right, well, once we're out of the ECC, we're home free. We're riding off into the sunset. It's Watch like, what no, you dude. wish for, man. No, dude, you're going to get piped by whoever that next conference is. And I only say mm. that because that next conference will have leverage for days over you. I think if I were Florida State, I would continue to negotiate. If I'm Florida State, I'm going to stop going to court. I don't want this fought in the public court of public opinion. I would get very quiet now. I would continue with this sideshow if that's what you want. I would focus on making money. I would focus on new NIL deals. I would focus because universities, whether we like it or not, they're going to make money on NIL. They are. They always have and they always will. They've always leveraged the athlete to make money and that will not change. Right. I would focus on growing my collective. I would focus on... There's no way you did... The, the gangster John Calipari walked into Arkansas and unequivocally... I don't think you can even argue he got there through through donor and collective. It's the only reason that Cal left Lexington. And he joked yesterday, much to your credit, he joked yesterday, I don't have a basketball team in Arkansas. Doesn't have any players. Right? You you look at you look at the pursuit of Drew um at at, at Kentucky. He's not going to have players there, but he's going to have money. And he's going to have donors and they're going to buy players. You better figure out the money and the donors because you never can have enough donors. Nope. And you can never have enough money. If I'm Florida State, I am focused on growing my war chest. If I am Florida State, I am focused on selling naming rights to every single doorknob in in that stadium. Yeah, you want naming rights to this little two by two piece of grass over here? Right? Like. This is the Geico goalpost. <laughs> I mean, I, everything. Hey, hey, this is the State Farm cement mm. pillar up in the corner everything. of the stadium. I am focused on. I am focused on having a department that all they do is create video content for YouTube and social. I am focused on leveraging that. I want. I want every. I want Bucky's logo in the bottom left corner of every video on our Instagram channel. Yep. I want, I want everything. Yep. That if I'm Florida State, that's how I'm going to make up my money gap. It's not burning more money in the form of legal fees. It's not burning more money in the form of a buyout in the ACC. It's not burning more money because the, I, I thought this may have been Joel Klatt. Somebody said the other day. Does Florida State think they're going to make more money the first five years in a new conference than they're making in the no, ACC? No, no. And the answer is they're not Hell going to no. make more money in it. Whatever conference they go into, they're going to take a write down. They're going to be they they are going to be a a quiet partner, and it's going to probably take them five years to get into that league and be a full share partner. And if you win a national championship, maybe that accelerates the curve. But I think that's something you should very much pay attention to. Because I think this is this is not this is not going to be easy for Florida State. No, and I've just I'm sick for their fans because Florida State's got passionate fans, and you're going to have some suffrage here over the next probably three years. Because I think this comes to a head by kickoff. I would think, I would think this will come to a head by kickoff. We'll see. And I think you're. Mm, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Stepanek, good morning. Uh, do you think it would be easier for just the football team for Florida State? I mean, it's an interesting question. We hear about this more and more, but I... I would the ACC play ball like that? I, I don't know, dude. I, I think that, again, it's... it's. I, I just don't... I, I think for the ACC, you just you can't budge on anything. You can't... You have to hold FSU's feet to the fire on this because yeah. as soon as you relent, your league is going to melt down. I'm telling you, that is what's at stake here for the ACC. So I would, I, I don't think they will relent on anything. We'll see. Christopher Shannon, hello. The football revenue has to be the NIL. Why are fans and businesses buying players? Football generates close to $150 million and costs $50 million. The remaining has to be split with players. Yeah, I don't know about all that. I think I think that 
you it, it, this is a money making operation. It's why we see private money wanting to come into the Super League God tier conversation because right. it makes significant money. That money, though, traditionally we've all relied on TV contracts and grant of rights to make us our money. That's not the way the game's played anymore. That I'll continue to I'll continue to to pound the nail that TV money is not endless. There's not just some, you know, like printing press of money in the TV industry. Private money is going to facilitate this God tier thing. It's going to facilitate the next iteration of Arkansas basketball. Donor money, you understand that donor money is private money. That's Tyson Foods paying John Calipari to be the head coach at Arkansas. That's the that's the way of the future. That's why the Utah Utes play at Rice Eccles Stadium, which is named after the Rice Eccles families. It's why Eccles is on every flipping building in this town. It's private money. Yeah. Right? You you look at pick T Boom Pickens or the the most notable donors. Their names are usually on buildings. You know, you look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump has made a brand by putting his name on the side of buildings. That's what private money is all about. That right there is what private money is all about. Private money makes the world go round. And if you are Florida State, you better ramp up your private money efforts. You better ramp up names on buildings. You better ramp up names on fields. You better have Chick-fil-A on your field every single snap of the football. Yeah, That's how, that's how you win. In my opinion, that's how you win. Yes, Eric and Raleigh, I want winners. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Damn right. Uh, Doug uh, McClendon, ESPN doesn't want the ACC ESPN agreement to be made public by Florida Sunshine Laws. So a settlement will have ESPN's not going to have any say in a settlement. They're not going to have any say in a settlement. ESPN will not opt in for the additional term for uh, from 2027 to 2036. Yeah, so what Florida State fans trying to do here is they're referencing a letter that ESPN wrote as part of this case that said, ESPN basically said, hey, this is a private agreement between two entities and it, it should not be made public. Florida it, the, State, you know. Part of the argument is that Florida State breached ethics and fiduciary responsibility by making public the business of the ACC, including their, their TV contracts. That's what this is about. That is not what this case is about. That is not, if you are Florida State, and again, Florida State fan, with all due respect, how eager are you to piss off ESPN if you're Florida State? And this is the hammer in the situation. It's just about every college in this country. How eager are you to piss off ESPN? Because where you are and where you want to go, allegedly, the SEC, uh, they're all in business with ESPN. How eager are you to piss off ESPN? I would not be eager. I'd not be trying. And I love that Florida State fans are like, ah, fuck them. We're Florida State. How has that worked out for you? <laughs> How has that worked out for you? Not well, dude. <laughs> I, right? How's that worked out for you? It has not worked out at all. Because you flexed and you're like, we're Florida State. And we're still in the ACC. Like, how has that worked out for you? Yeah. You can't piss everybody off. Nope. You can't always be likes to fight guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Like, if you look at the other schools in the ACC, you really tell me they want to be a part of this? Like, I understand it for Clemson. Clemson wants to get to the Big Ten. I get it. Totally understand it. But yeah. UNC doesn't want to be a part of this. Duke doesn't want to be a part of this. They don't need to be a part of this. They have no... There's no, again, the word I always use is incentive. You, you, if you're those blue blood premier brands, you don't have any need for this childish behavior. And there is a prevailing belief that North Carolina is laughing at Florida State. And they should be. And I think they are. Yeah. Because Florida State is is doing North Carolina's bidding here. I mean, they're, Florida State is... This is nothing but damaging for Florida State. There, again, I just continue to tell you there's no win here. Yeah. This is nothing but damaging for Florida State. And so we sit here, and who's the real winner in the ACC here? Well, it's always going to be North Carolina and Duke. 
it's always going to be North Carolina and Duke. This conference lives with North Carolina and Duke. Mm -hmm. All Florida State is showing is how little actual influence they have over this conference. You can't get nine other members to jump on board with you that you're making so little money. No, because you said they were all pieces of shit and you're the one that made the conference all this money and we deserve the respect and you don't and we're Florida State and, and you're not. And I feel like people forgot that Florida <laughs> State said that. They Florida but. State <laughs> has made the argument repeatedly that they're the ones that power the program. They're the ones that power the conference and everybody else is just riding our coattails. How do you think that little sales pitch went over at Duke in North Carolina? Shut the fuck up, Donnie. That did not go over well. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. It it Come on. Come on. It is, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Gumby fresh out. Hello. Gumby. Hello. Damn, I miss you, dude. Uh, the Monty Show Stadium at Florida State right? University. Like, I, I love the concept moving forward in college football specifically. It's like, uh, yeah, man, the uh, left goalpost is brought to you by Geico and the right one's brought to you by State Farm. You know, yeah. like it, it's every and I get it. You got to make money. I totally understand it. But it's like the uh, you guys remember the controversy in the NBA? I think it was maybe it was last year, two seasons ago, where everyone was like, "Oh man, are we are are you know what's going to happen when they put jersey patches on the jersey? That's good. We're going to look like Europe now. Like what the hell? Or like the NHL freaking out that they were going to put logos on the helmets of the players? Like this is the wave. This is what people are doing." Like the, the, I don't know the last time you watched an NHL game on ESPN, the digital boards that they have where they can run ads, that's the new thing. So having, you know, superimposed logos on NBA courts and football fields, that's the next thing, man. That's where, 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 yeah. where, where ad partners want to be because it allows them to customize what they look like. And, and I just, I, I'm telling you, man, when, like if you're an ad partner, you, you, you at this point would have to be a massive Florida state fan yourself to feel good about advertising with them at this stage. Like, honestly, because the only way you feel good about working with them, if you're a national ad partner is if you're a fan. Now, if you're local and you, you live in that community, that's a different thing. I totally, totally get it from, different thing. Totally get it from that standpoint. Hey, it's, it's Florida state football, huge brand. We're right down the street. Okay. Perfect sense. But if you're, again, the Chick-fil-A's of the world, it doesn't, I mean, you tell me that it makes financial sense to invest in this program with the with the PR they got spinning around them right Not now. Not at the moment. I, mean, I don't on. think so. OG Gary, a member for 13 Oh, months. let me pull it out for you, OG. Always rocking fly kicks in the Monty Show uh, members only Instagram group. I put in my, speaking of Florida State flexing, I put in my, uh, my Air Jordan 4 breads, put them on my feet for the first time yesterday. Cash. Cash. Uh, the ACC knows if they allow this door to be opened, it's going to start the implosion process. The ACC knows Florida State and Clemson aren't the only ones wanting out. It's going to it's gonna be all their big names. It will be, no doubt. Uh, Vladimir Putin's favorite Monty show member is Dakota Tubbs, who's been a member for eight months. My man, love the show, guys. I know I'm changing topics here, but what's all the smoke around the Arizona Coyotes? Stick around for 10 minutes. Oh, we will get to and that. We sir. will get to that. That's not changing topics. That's exactly right. Michael Smith Michael. from West Virginia. Hey, Michael. The expert of clean coal. Yeah. They can sign the contract 25 times in a row. FSU is still leaving one way or the other. They have crossed the Rubicon, and there is no going back. I don't disagree but, with but that. But again, I, I think I, I want to be really clear, though. Like, yeah, you can say they're leaving one way or the other, but leaving without a fee and leaving where you got stripped of all your your character and integrity are two different things. Yes. And, and, and leaving that conference having paid hundreds of millions of dollars to do so uh, and then being unable to to schedule. Does she and mean enable? Enable, unable. Unable is a word. I think it is. Unable to to schedule and execute. Like, like that's going to be an issue. So I love you, Mike, but be careful with this because it's easy to say, well, they're going to leave no matter what. Yeah, they're going to leave at some point. Everybody agrees with that. But if you have to pay several hundred million dollars 
and you got to figure out a schedule and you got to figure out TV rights and you got to make less money in a new conference. I'm not so sure that leaving ended up being the right decision after all. Yeah. On top of that awful decision you made to sign the grant of rights, not once, but twice. Sir Bob Laba Laws dot com. What the fuck are you? Yeah. Uh, the goal line brought to you by Chico's Bail Bonds. Oh. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Gumby fresh out. Average college football jerseys finna look like NASCAR. You cars. see what I'm saying, dude? Like, that's where we're going. Yeah, put Chico's Bails, Bail Bonds on a, on a Buddy's, jersey. Buddy's going to have an ad sticker on his cleats. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the nightmare. Hello. FSU dog their conference, and now they need the members to join their fight to leave way to look like an ass that's what i'm saying dude i think and, and again i just if you're a florida state fan what's it going to take to get out let's come up with a really favorable number what would a really favorable 100 mil 100 million 100 million that's a favorable number in my opinion okay so you get out for 100 million and so, you retain your tv rights and you wind up in the sec yeah do you think you're getting 100% revenue Right at your the moment you begin as a member. What is because the 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 new SEC deal gets each school fifty a year, I think. Fifty it is. plus, yes. Fifty plus a year. So so right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. Florida State is getting forty ish, high thirties, I think. So so a full share in the SEC theoretically would be more than you're making. But you're not gonna realize that full share for and I agree with you, probably five years. So you're, t I mean, you got to plan on being 25 to 30 mil, like a half share partner for five years. Yeah. Which is amazing because you're going from 55 million on CBS to 300 million on ESPN and ABC. That's a lot more money. Um, yeah, I think it is. But again, it comes back to this angle you've been saying for quite some time. Schools and conferences need to start making money outside of the grants of rights. Yeah. Like you have to do that. Yeah. You even with a, a deal as as well off as the SEC's deal jumping from 55 million per year to 300 million per year that turns into a 3 billion dollar deal. You've got it they've got to find ways to monetize that outside of it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I forgot how much of a jump that was. Yeah, dude. Until you said that. Yeah. That's I I still am so, like, I Amazed get it. I understand why Florida State feels the way they do in a sense of, like, the discrepancy between, you know, what the Big Ten and the SEC are making versus what the ACC is making. But that doesn't change what you did or the agreement you signed. And and that's why I say, like, I, I if you're the ACC, again, I, I would not budge at all. I would not negotiate at all because you can come up with whatever media, you know, storm you want to. Contract's contract, dude. It, it, you know what I mean? And and, and it, this doesn't really start becoming a problem until you need to negotiate a new grant of rights, in which time the grant of rights will no longer exist in concept. We will be in a different place in college football. So if I'm the ACC, I'm not doing a damn thing with this. I'm not negotiating. I'm not giving you anything because I know by the time it, it, it comes time to create a new agreement with these schools in the conference. Yes. The setup's going to be different. We're not going to be doing grants of rights anymore. We, we, you may not even need to do another agreement, if you will. So, so that's why I say for the ACC, we should stop treating this like, like, oh man, the conference is auto going to melt down. I don't think that's necessarily true. They are at risk. They have exposure, no question about it. But it's going to require them to again. Here comes that word: incentivize people to be in your conference, right? Hey. Why should you come be in the SEC even if you're a team that's never going to win the league? Oh, that's right, because you're going to make a lot of money. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how how much. If you are if you are a, let's say your total distribution per school top 70 million in the SEC, which I think it probably will. Right. After, after everything's said and done. If you're Florida State, do you, can you truly believe that you're going to get 100% there's no way the SEC would allow that. Yeah. Why would they pay you more than they have to? There, there's just no reason to do that. Uh, Chrissy, hell no. Nah. Florida State got the upper hand in public in the public eye. They do. Um, they need to continue this lawsuit and get into discovery stage and see how far ESPN's willing to go. I don't think that. Okay, so let's. How does that play out? Yeah. Play let's it out. let's go with this. Let, how does that play out? You're Florida State. 
and you're trying to leverage ESPN to get out of the ACC. How do you win on that? I'm just asking for a friend. You piss off and you burn your relationship with ESPN. How does that benefit you? Let's say football only. Where does ACC basketball live? That's right, ESPN. Okay. Let's say you wind up in the SEC. Who's got the SEC TV deal? ESPN. Okay, let's say you go independent, which you're not. But let's say you go independent because everybody hates you and your mom. Sounds like you're a good candidate for the CW. Like, there's no, like, this whole thing, and and I continue to tell people, when have you ever seen, when have you ever seen one university leverage ESPN or ABC? Never. Disney. Ron DeSantis tried to leverage Disney. How'd that work out? Didn't work out. Hey, just out of curiosity, when did the tipping point happen with Disney? Yeah, when Disney said, yeah, we're going to close Disney World and we're going to move out of Florida. Mm. Oh, all of a sudden, my point is, you don't leverage ESPN. You don't leverage the people that pay you. You don't burn your bridge with the guy signing your check. You don't do that. And again, let's say you wound up in the Big Ten. Is the Big Ten eager to sign a contract with Florida State on any term? I don't think they are. Are you eager to when when do you, if you're Fox and CBS, do you want to get in business with Florida State, who just burned ESPN and ABC, your partners in college football and the NFL? Somehow, I don't think you are. Like you're not leveraging ESPN. Yeah, I'm telling you. Like everybody loves this. Oh, they want discovery. If you're ESPN, do you really think that you've co- like uh, all the Florida State fans? Discovery, bring ESPN to court. Bring them to the one guy in the one guy in the ES uh, in the uh, YouTube comment section. We're gonna bring ESPN to their needs. Okay, and where's the win in that? Okay, the win is you get out of the ACC. Congratulations. What did you exactly win? Nothing. There's no bringing. Like I, yeah. Anyway, uh, Steve Stepanek, Ron DeSantis had his wedding at Disney, I believe. I'm sure he did. (laughs) Gumby Fresh Out, FSU, PBS Kids. Yes. Eric and Raleigh, FSU has to want to go to the Big 32. I I mean, how do you not try for the brass ring? How do you not? You know, uh, Gumby Fresh Out, hell no to the na, 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 hell (laughs) no. Like, just bring the dancing uh, pallbearers out, right? With the, <laughs> that's what we need. You know, I just, I think it's funny. Mad Cat, the next round of realignment is going to be wild. No telling what's going to happen. No telling what's going to happen. Nope, none. Sir Bob Lob, FSU should sell Ron DeSantis go-go boots to raise money. You could do that. Uh, Eric and Raleigh, there's nothing to expose at ESPN. I don't talk common sense. Again, you signed an agreement. And now you don't like the agreement. Go scorched earth. Let's see how this let's see how this turns out. Stepan, a couple more, because then we do have to get to the coyotes in Salt Lake City. Could SMU buy Florida State's rights in the ACC? Buy out Florida State. I have no idea if that would even be possible. Interesting, interesting thought though. I, I don't mind that thought. I, I think that, you know. Again, when someone leaves a conference, opportunity presents itself in a myriad of ways. Yeah. So, you know, if you're SMU, yeah, I mean, I, I I would assume the ACC would be open to that conversation because, again, you want to make sure your conference as a whole, as an entity, continues to keep its revenue at a certain level. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sure it's a conversation. OG Gary, who I think yesterday in the members-only Instagram tra- uh, chat tried to argue that raising inflation is good. Yeah, OG Gary got his bag slapped by <laughs> Boss Frog in our in our members only group chat yesterday over taxes and investment strategy and then, you know, telling us that, you know, inflation going up is a good thing right. and you know, we we all believe what we want to believe, but I I'm not sure I believe that. <laughs> Love you, Gary. Uh, isn't the next round of realignment in, imminent? Isn't it always imminent? Isn't it always? It's ongoing. Uh, let's see. Jim Rome fan, UW fan Jim, who always is talking about Rome. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I love Jim Rome. That's and, right. You know, 
Uh, great show, guys. Go dogs. Uh, go dogs. Uh, Ron DeSantis bobblehead. Where, no. Okay, can we stop with the sexualization of Ron DeSantis? Shut the fuck up, Tommy. We took that out of the books in the libraries in Florida. Can we please stop? Okay, you know. <laughs> Wrong show, my bad. <clears throat> Sean Mirzinski, hello. Florida State is a spoiled child who always likes more and more. I want more. And when they don't, they throw a tantrum. I, I Again, I don't believe that this is Florida State. This is this is Florida State doing anything other than look at the guys down the street making more money than us. How are we going to make more money? Yeah. I think they look at the Floridas. I think they look at their competition in the Southeast and they see them making between 70 and 100 million dollars every year. And they're like, "Why can't we do that?" And I say, "I don't know. Why don't you go and do that?" Instead of trying to get out of contracts that you sign not once but twice. Yeah. I don't think that I, I think at the 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 very basic here, this is in my opinion, this is FOMO. You you have this massive fear that you're missing out. Yeah. And you chose to go to court to try and fix that, which I think was a mistake. What you should have done did is you should not have signed that grant of rights. You shouldn't have signed it. And I don't know how else you spin that, you know, like it is, it is so difficult to me that you, you have a situation where you just are not able to, I don't even know what's the right way to say it. You're not able to think clearly. Yeah. And I think that's the struggle that you have is that you don't have the ability here to do what you needed to do because you were out of time. Now you feel like. So if you are if you are Florida State, I think you're probably exercising the only option you have because you couldn't find now nine other members to get out of the, the grant of rights. 100%. So I think your only option is to, to go scorched earth. And to that I say Florida State fans deserve better. Florida State on whole. But I go back to what Jake pointed out about Bobby Bowden. There's no way getting out of this. <laughs> the only way that you, the, the only reason that you are in the ACC is because you didn't want to fight through the SEC. And Bobby Bowden ha said as much, told Paul Feinbaum it was too difficult to win through the SEC to a national championship. Told 247 Sports, he, FSU would choose the SEC, but the administration, the presidents, and others wanted the ACC which really was better for us, it would have been hard uh, wading through the SEC. It's very difficult to argue that they took the easy route. And the easy button is always more expensive. I, yeah. I will continue to tell people the easy button is the most expensive thing you can do. Is what it is. A couple more, and then we got to roll. Uh, let's see. Bill G gifted 10 Monty Show memberships. Bill, thank you very much. Appreciate that. You know, um, Eric Wasikowski, a okay. member for four months. Okay, Eric, dude, please, please don't make an ass of yourself with this comment. Please don't stare at my profile pic for too long. It's T O O for too long. So you've already done it. Okay. T O O. There's a difference between two and two. And two. Uh, and T W O. Yeah. Uh, it's been known to cause severe cases of TDS. I don't know what TDS is. Without protection after it unblocks the sun. The ACC hid too much info about their grant of rights deal with ESPN. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. There's zero like, evidence I, of I that. I just, it's, yeah. Next comment. Tanner Plummer. Sup, casuals. What did I miss? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Patrick. FSU and Clemson are likely stuck in the ACC. But let's, again, they're not stuck. You decided to move in. You signed the lease. You signed the agreement. You're not stuck. You made your bed. It's time to lie in it. Yeah. Like let's not let's not make it out like they're shipwrecked on a beach and and they're victims here because they're not victims even a little bit. Totally agree. Even a little bit. Gumby, uh, or wait, I'm sorry, Chrissy. FSU and Clemson have powered the conference. No disrespect to Duke in North Carolina. North, those are basketball schools. Totally agree. Um, 
Ask Mitch Trubisky. Don't say that name ever again. FSU is looking at ACC giving Notre Dame all this money and uh, bringing nothing of value to the ACC. So you don't think that scheduling alliance is of any value? Just asking. Gumby Fresh Out, TDS, The Donkey Show. Oh, okay. okay. TDS, Team Down South. Okay. Oh, I mean, you know. Jimmy Otson, Hello. It's obvious they shouldn't have signed the grant of rights. They are using the James Harden method of getting out of contracts. Wow. They might well, want to start Jimmy? eating more. Jimmy? Yeah, where's the fat suit, huh? Fat! The James fat! Harden fat! method of getting out of contracts. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, Let's see. Why do sports bros always have TDS? I don't know. I still don't know what TDS Again, can means. someone tell us what TDS is? Uh, we're just not in the cool kids club, I guess. Um, Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, got okay. it. Okay. Lil Jizzy, let's just hear what Retzloff has to say about it. Okay. Love our guy, Jake Retzloff. N.E., hello. My favorite part was their lawyer saying the AD and presidents didn't have the right to sign the, uh, in the name of Florida State, which was part of the argument. This this contract oh, was money. never was never put before the board of trustees. Money. These fucking assholes just put their names on it and thought it was fine. <laughs> Not thinking that's the, you know, it's fine. Uh, Clippers versus Mavericks in the first round could be fun. Clippers can't stay healthy. Uh, you know, Eric and Raleigh. I'm stuck in a prison of my own making. Florida State University to a certain extent. To a certain extent, there's there's no doubt about that. Cam Harrison, hello. All right, the Monty Show, as always, is presented by our good friends at Big O Tires and American Fork. Big O Tires and American Fork, your total car care experts. Make sure you find them on social. Big O Tires AF. Tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. Let's talk about taxpayer dollars getting stuck up the ass of billionaires. <laughs> All right, here's a question for you. Is... Salt Lake City in NHL town. Well, if you ask Ryan Smith, the current owner of the Utah Jazz, Salt Lake City in the state of Utah is clamoring for the National Hockey League. At least that's what he told Pat McAfee months ago. And now we know that the Utah legislature has approved a half percentage point raise to the sales tax in Salt Lake City, so that consumers can give Ryan Smith, who's allegedly a billionaire, a billion dollars. That's what this is the equivalence to. On top of that, Ryan Smith now has what is believed to be an agreement in principle, a verbal agreement to move the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City this coming October and have them temporarily play at the Delta Center where... The Utah Jazz currently play less than mediocre basketball. And Ryan Smith, a supposed billionaire, will be paying 1.3 at a minimum. I've seen 1.3, 1.5, 1.9, at least $1.3 billion to buy and relocate the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City. And then taxpayers will give Ryan Smith, a supposed billionaire, a billion dollars to build a new arena for the Jazz and the Coyotes. And my question is, why are we giving billionaires billions of dollars? Why are we giving billionaires billions of taxpayer dollars when we have issues with things like teacher salaries, education, access to affordable housing? Why are we raising taxes on people who can't currently afford to buy a house? to give that extra tax money to a guy who's supposedly a billionaire who rails about how much money is in tech and that Silicon Slopes here in Utah is exploding and there's so much money and new business starts, then why do you need a tax shelter? Then why do you, Ryan Smith, need a billion dollars of taxpayer money to build an arena? You're already a billionaire. Go and get private money to do it. I mean, look at what you did with the Jazz. You've won all those, oh wait, you haven't won, but you've bought all this, oh wait, you haven't bought talent on any level. 
Ryan Smith, in his time as the owner of the Utah Jazz, has done nothing but put money back in his pocket. He traded his biggest contracts from Boyan Bogdanovich, Rudy Gobert, and Donovan Mitchell straight down the line. He traded his largest contracts. He is on team-friendly deals with his best players, and they're not winning. And I made the argument yesterday on Twitter that I'm going to make right now. Ryan Smith has been nothing short of a disappointment as the owner of the Utah Jazz. Why should we believe that Ryan Smith relocating and owning an NHL team in Salt Lake City and getting a billion dollars of taxpayer money to do it when we don't pay cops, firefighters, or teachers, when we have a homelessness epidemic, when we have a housing epidemic, when we have a drug use epidemic and an overdose epidemic in this state, when we have social issue epidemics in this state, why are we giving a billion dollars to a guy that's supposedly a billionaire, Jake? I don't understand it. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, the 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 part that bothers me the most is we want to gift wrap it in this idea that it's going to help the community. That, you know, building an entertainment district as part of this arena renovation is going to help the community. It's going to, you know, the the catchphrase is revitalize downtown Salt Lake. And 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 while it may improve the aesthetics of downtown Salt Lake and while downtown needs that attention, I really struggle with this and I struggle with it as someone who who right now is unwilling to 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 buy a house with where we're at in the market in Salt Lake. I'm unwilling to, you know, uh to do a lot of things because of how much it costs, man. And and I tend to agree that I don't have a lot of faith in Ryan because of what has not happened with the Utah Jazz. You know, uh, again, I always like to bring up the point that when Ryan Smith bought the Utah Jazz, the message was we're carrying the torch from the Millers. We're going to do right by the Millers. We're going to make sure that, you know, we we put a good product on the floor so when Gail's sitting courtside every night, she's got something entertaining to watch. And that's just not been the case. And more and more, when I look at what the current state of uh, the Jazz is and what Ryan hasn't done, Dude, the Jazz went from being a, 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 a perennial playoff contender every single season for a minute, for probably five, six years in a row, to being a nobody, to not going to make the playoffs. Uh, you did a bad rebrand. Jake, they're, like, they, Jake, I, they're developing their young players. And, and, and look, that, that if you want to keep lying to us, that's fine, because you don't develop anybody. I don't see any development happening. But is I, there is there a legitimate argument to be made that Ryan Smith has been a successful owner of the Utah Jazz or a successful minority owner at RSA? I, I, I think that it depends who you ask and how you define success. How do we define success in sports? And I'm genuinely asking because it seems that we've gotten confused on this. Success in sports is winning. You don't you don't put the pads on, you don't put the jersey on, you don't, you know, whatever you know, analogy you want to use. You don't go out to the golf course to shoot 100. You go out to the golf course to shoot the best you can shoot, to to win as many games as you can, right? And they're not doing that. And it used to be, a year ago, I was like, well, maybe we're, you know, Danny's got a plan here, right? Like Danny, you know, and Justin Zanuck, they've got a plan, it's developmental, and then they're going to make a move here or there, there's a plan. But anymore, I don't, I don't really feel like there's a plan. What I feel like is Ryan Smith is saving as much money as possible, because he's not a liquid billionaire. His his valuation comes from assets and stock options and that he can't quickly yeah. liquidate. And the Jazz, as a basketball product, are simply the best example we have visually of his struggles as an owner. Because ultimately, a good owner uh, is, is going to invest in the team. And I feel like Ryan's done exactly the opposite. Notice... Notice all of my complaints have nothing to do with Ryan Smith as a person. Never said Ryan's a bad guy. Never said that he's a asshole. I've never said that he's some terrible dude. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that as soon as you start reaching into my pocket, Ryan Smith, now I've got a problem with you. Now, now I have an issue because you're asking me to cover costs that you should be covering. Well, and I go back to the Miller family who is asking for a billion dollars in tax dollars to build a ballpark, to bring a major league baseball team to Salt Lake City. And, That's even worse in my and opinion. And who's <laughs> clamoring for that? Yeah. And you, it, I would agree. You know why it's worse? Because it's a statewide hotel tax. So we're just going to kill, a, kill, the, kill a, a pipeline in this state. I don't understand why we do what we do. 
And the biggest issue is, and we've asked the politicians, I've asked the politicians who approve this to come on the show and talk about it. Obviously, they don't want to talk about the free tax money they gave Ryan Smith. Um, but why are we giving tax money to billionaires? And I know I just said this, but I'm going to say it a thousand fucking times. We have crisis in this state, in this country. We are raising a half point, the sales tax, to give a supposed billionaire in Ryan Smith a new arena downtown. Where's the church? The, 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 the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon church, who has a bigger footprint in real estate in this town than the LDS church? Who? Nobody. Nobody. Temple Square downtown. Be completely renovated. Like they're doing a massive project down there. Why doesn't the church kick down? If this is so important for downtown Salt Lake City, and this is going to help revitalize downtown, does the church have no influence over that or no? Oh, that's right. They, they don't. We don't talk about those things in this town. Okay, let me ask you this. If we took a billion dollars, could we pay teachers? If we took a billion dollars, could we make college more accessible and more affordable? If we took a billion dollars, could we invest that in affordable housing instead of six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar mansions that we want to build in this town? Mm -hmm. If we took a billion dollars, could we pay nurses? If we learned anything through the pandemic, nurses, police officers, firefighters, first responders across the board, could we pay them more money with a billion dollars in sales tax? Could we actually, and I know, let's get really fucking crazy. Money. Could we fill some potholes in this town? Dude. Because all we do in this town is build stuff, right? If we took a billion dollars, could we make the lives of, of Utah residents better instead of handing a billion dollars to a supposed billionaire. Could we do that? We could, but we don't. Because rich guys help rich guys get richer. That's what this is. That's why I don't like this. I don't like it because we have far more pressing needs. People are dying and we're doing nothing about it, but we're gonna give a supposed billionaire a billion dollars in taxpayer money coming out of my pocket Yeah, in the form of a half percent sales tax increase. Do you think that's ever going to decrease? They don't generally work that way. Like we're we're all we're doing is helping rich guys get richer. And I just don't know why we're doing it. There is not there is not some clamoring to bring the NHL to Salt Lake City. And and by the way, I think it's funny. So Ryan Smith the other day tweeted out the jobs report and that Utah is growing and that there's plenty of jobs and everything's amazing. Right, that's not what we're talking about, though. We're not. No, we're not, not. We're not talking about the job market. Yeah, the job market in Utah is strong. Right. What we're talking about is: is there a need or a desire for the NHL to come to Salt Lake City? And I do agree with people who say, "Hey, yeah, you know, Salt Lake's growing. You know, eventually, at some point, you know, more major professional sporting leagues will come to the state." Mm -hmm. I don't even disagree with that. That's part of progress. It's going to happen. I don't. I don't have that much of an issue with the NHL as a product coming to this town and sharing a multi-purpose facility with the Jazz. I don't have necessarily a big problem with that. No. My problem is how you're doing it, why we're doing it. Okay, the why is the state's growing. We got to bring in more sports teams. Okay, cool. If that's your why, fine. Knock yourself out. But don't ask me to pay for it. I didn't ask to pay for this. Do I like hockey? Yeah, sure. I like hockey so much that, you know, uh, when we go to Vegas, you know, a couple times a year, we'll catch a Golden Knights game. Or or when we go to Phoenix, we'll, we'll, we'll catch a Coyotes game, which I think is the other hilarious part of this situation. Ryan Smith thinks that he's going to buy the Phoenix Coyotes, bring them to Salt Lake City as part of this package, and you think you're just going to, you're just going to turn that organization over and all of a sudden they're going to start winning games. This isn't an expansion team. You understand that, right? This yeah. isn't, hey, we're the Golden Knights. We're an expansion team. We get to pluck the best talent out of the league so that we can have a chance. That's not what this is. You're buying the team, you're moving the team, and you have what you have. Last time I checked, Ryan Smith doesn't know anybody in the NHL. Last time I checked, Ryan Smith was a Utah kid who, who, who grew up as a Jazz fan and as a BYU guy. And that's how he was able to get in and position himself 
for the Jazz, right? So now all he's done here is said, oh, I see an opportunity. Hey, I've been saving money, saving money, saving money, not investing in the Jazz, not giving a damn about doing anything positive with the Jazz except jersey rebrands and marketing yeah. pieces. And now I see an opportunity in Phoenix where they need somebody who's willing to take a risk because make no mistake about it. This is the other thing no one's talking about. This is a risk. You understand that, right? What happens if you bring the NHL to Salt Lake City and it absolutely flames out? We just going to say, oh, well. My guess is what's going to happen is the NHL is, they're coming. I mean, it, it, it's going to happen. And I think that what you're going to see for two, three years, much like he did with the Jazz, Ryan Smith will invest some money. He, they will likely, they will likely win. And then what? And then what? Because this has been his pattern so far as the owner of the Jazz. He's done nothing to invest in winning in, in the NBA. Nothing. And I think his entire angle here has been from day one to get a new arena. I think his entire angle here is to make more money, pocket more money for himself. My guess is he'll take the the Ricketts family who owns the Cubs and you know is investing in the PGA Tour and all this other stuff. But why did Chelsea Football Club fans reject the Ricketts as the new owners? Because they don't want what the Ricketts and what Ryan Smith do. Those guys will dump a bunch of money into a team. They'll win, and then they will pull the plug, and they will profit take, and they will pay off their debt, and those teams will suffer. We've watched it with the Cubs. We've watched it with the Ricketts. We're watching it with Ryan Smith. And Ryan Smith talks a good game. Hey, look at me. Cool white guy. I wear my hat backwards. I'm a tech billionaire supposedly, I but golf. I, I, I need a billion dollars in taxpayer money. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm again going to say, I love hockey. I'm a passionate Chicago Blackhawk fan. I, I support the Utah Grizzlies. This is not a hockey town. It's not a hockey town. Is there any, is there any question as to why just mysteriously not having a great season on the ice? The Grizzlies are not having a great season on the ice. But yet they're touting massive ticket sales. How do you think that's happening? Do you think that's just their ticket guys out there kicking ass? That's not what this is. This is all part of a plan. This is all part of a, hey, look, people love hockey in Salt Lake City. Because it's all part of the plan. And I, I hope I am 100% wrong because there is nothing more than I would love Connor Bedard to come and play in Salt Lake City twice a year. When I was in Arizona, we had season tickets to the Coyotes. I love, I love the game. This is not a hockey town. This will be, this will be, I'm telling you, this will be the Atlanta Thrashers. This will be, yeah, this is not going to work. It's not going to work here. It'll work in the short term because it always works in the short term. Yeah, there's you always get that pop, right? Hey, there's a new thing in town. Let's go see it. Let's go check it out. But it's it's a billion dollars over what thirty years, thirty years, and you're going to make the argument that this guy who hasn't won dick since he bought the Jazz, who has not invested in the product on the floor at all, you're going to make the argument that this guy belongs owning a new team. And we're going to give him a billion dollars to do it. And as part of that process, I'm sure he's going to get a handout from the Olympic Committee when the Olympics come back to Salt Lake as well, which is another reason he wants a new building. How? And I'm, I listen, again, this is not, I'm just truth telling. That's what we do on the show, much to the chagrin of Florida State fan. The truth is, is very difficult to get away from. Yeah. This is not a hockey town. The young, the youth hockey programs here are not booming. The the rinks are not plentiful. I just think even for the average person, I don't hear people talking about hockey, man. I hear them talking about football and the Masters and like, yeah, you know, and, and again, in our members only chat, and I'm sure people are in the comments section vouching for this. Dude, it's not just us saying the Jazz suck. And that they're unenjoyable to watch. Like, you understand that, right? Like, 
the garden variety fan, the the fan who's watched this team for five minutes and also the fan that watched them for 30 years is like, dude, like, what are we doing? Like what? Like, I'm just not in, like, again, I always reference it. Greg Hawkins two weeks ago, straight up said in our members only group, dude, I've lost faith in Ryan Smith. This team is doing nothing. This team is scrimmaging on a nightly basis. And the thing I don't understand is how are we the only ones? Oh, I know how we're the only ones saying that. This is a guy that controls the media here. Mm -hmm. So the media will tell you, oh man, this team is on the right path. It's I, not on the right path. Dude, I think your, your angle about the church is spot on. So let me get this right. The church, the church owns KSL, right? But wait, wait. I want you to understand about the the church is the largest landowner in this state. You need to understand that. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints owns more land in this state than anybody in the land they own. And they just announced new LDS temples. And people are celebrating. So understand that the church who owns BYU and owns the most land of anybody else in Utah. That's who we're about to talk about. Understand the power that they carry in this town. As you were. Yeah. You I, yeah, they they <laughs> they own KSL. And I think what's really funny is is that every Sunday, Ryan Smith sends out a tweet about something religion related about God or a passage. A passage, right? Like from from the book. And and what I think is so funny is that in Salt Lake specifically, um, there's a ton of hypocrisy with religion where Ryan Smith is LDS on Sundays, but he but he doesn't live up to LDS values when it comes to making money, right? Like if you think about the point my guy over here made about how where's the LDS church when it comes to revitalizing Salt Lake City? They're happy to revitalize their little patch of land in Salt Lake, right in downtown. Temple Square. Temple which Square. If, if you go, if you go on Google Earth. Look at look at Temple Square, Salt Lake City. So they're happy to, to revitalize and renovate what they have, but they're not interested in helping the homeless. They're not interested in helping in, the addicted. Yeah, like they're not interested in in solving those issues. And why are they not investing? It, never mind. What is the LDS Church's role in this? Ryan Smith is is he is LDS, yeah. right? He's a Latter Day Saint. Um, Ryan Smith owns the Utah Jazz. He is a minority owner in Real Salt Lake. Um, he owns uh, the Zone Sports Network, which is managed by Bonneville Media, which is owned by mm. the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who also owns KSL TV and radio, the largest television station, the largest uh, radio station. They own the Deseret News, which is the second largest newspaper in this town. And they all support Ryan Smith. Where is the critical piece on this? Where is the where is the sports talk host, the news talk host, talking about that we're giving half a percentage point in sales tax to pay for Ryan Smith's new arena downtown? Did it go to a vote? Did was it a ballot initiative? No, because it wouldn't have passed. And again, I point to Kansas City. The Chiefs yeah. are the foremost dynasty in, in the National Football League right now. Their fans resoundingly voted down a tax increase to pay for a, a renovation of Arrowhead Stadium. Because we have other issues. Our kids can't get educated. Our, our, we don't pay nurses, teachers, firemen, policemen. We don't pay for that stuff. But we're giving a... I can keep saying it, man. Yep. It's wild to me. It's wild to me that we're doing this and there's no accountability for it. It is shameful. It is abhorrent. It is what's wrong with politics in our country. So when I tell you, don't worry about Donald Trump, worry about your mayor, worry about your council people, worry about your, your county commissioners, worry about your local legislators, your, your state senators. Don't worry about the man in the orange suit. Get local because they you're, you're creating tax breaks on uh, not unlike the 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 tax renovation we saw recently where billionaires got billions we're giving tax hikes to billionaires vote in your local elections that's what i would say enough of us more of you 
Uh, let's get your thoughts in here. Let's see. Mike Smith, like I said, I do not follow hockey. What that said, if a smaller market like Columbus in a state with multiple pro teams can do okay, what about Utah? Here's the difference. I think in Utah, this is a this has always been, obviously, a college sports town. I think we, in general, passionately support college sports. I think for the first three to five years, we will support a hockey team. I can tell you now, I will be there when the Blackhawks play. The issue is not will fans buy tickets. What's going to happen when Ryan Smith, Ryan Smith's, which is he stops spending money on payroll? Because to get fans in the gate, you're going to have to win the first two, three years. And then what? And here's the other thing. How are Jazz fans going to feel when the NHL team competes at a higher level than the Jazz do? Because mm. Ryan Smith came in here, like you said, oh, the Millers, and they're great, and we want to bring a championship here. Want to continue the heritage. So we're going to trade Rudy Gobert, and we're going to trade Donovan Mitchell, and Boyan Bogdanovich, and Buckets O'Bench, and we're going to decimate this roster. All in the name of rebuilding. And we're not going to spend money on talent. And we are not going to spend money on... He renovated Delta Center. Why did he do that? Because he got a, a stipend from the NBA to have the All-Star game here. What have they done to build a winner with the Jazz? The the uniform debacle where you didn't plan it well enough so the, the beloved Purple Mountain uniform was a year delayed? Come on. What makes you think that he's going to win with the Jazz? He has no choice, in my opinion, but to spend money and win with the NHL franchise. Mm -hmm. Because if they come out and they win 20 games, you're fucked. People here will not go to those games. Nope. People here will not. You can put them on any TV station you want. If you bring a team to Salt Lake City, they will not support them if they do not win. And no, we're not paying for Coyotes Plus. They will not win. They, I'm telling you now. Uh, Kay Nuren says, I couldn't name one NHL team. It's not, a, you guys, it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of, do you know the NHL? Will you get to know the NHL? Will you get to know the NHL? You will, whether you want to or not. It's going to be on TV. It's going to be all over the media because Ryan Smith controls the media in this town. Yep. It's going to be everywhere. There's going to be billboards. There's going to be ads. It's going to be on the radio. It's going to be on YouTube TV. It's going to be on regular TV. You're not going to be able to get away from it. Well, and you know what? You know what's going to happen. They won't be the Coyotes anymore. No, they're going to rebrand it. They'll rebrand Ryan it. Ryan Smith, and... is he's already doing a campaign taking suggestions for the new NHL team's name. He is going to pay. Do you guys understand? And here's why you, we're, we're, we are going to pay for his building. He's probably going to pay, let's call it $1.5 billion to buy the Coyotes and pay a relocation fee to get them to Salt Lake City. He's going to pay that money out of pocket. His, Him and his Smith Entertainment Group. So that's why we're paying it because he doesn't have the money to do it on his own. No. And don't always money. He's revitalizing downtown. Great. Shouldn't we have done that at, like anyway? Shouldn't the church be doing that? Yeah. Like, shouldn't we, like, shouldn't revitalizing downtown Salt Lake City be an initiative that was done regardless of an NHL team? That's what I'm saying. Like, Ryan Smith is no hero here. Ryan Smith is not like doing anybody a favor. And that's what I think is hilarious in this town. Oh, well, Ryan Smith is going out of his way. And, you know, Ryan Smith is leading the way. And, you know, he, 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 he's, he's the best. And all I'm saying is, dude, like, I've lived here long enough to know that Salt Lake, downtown Salt Lake City is nothing to, to get excited about right now. I'm not like, oh, man, dude, bro, I got to go downtown, man, to see what, to do what. The Jazz are the ticket. That's it. That's it. And That's and, all. And I'm not even saying that from a place of, like, that I like that. I wish downtown was was popping i wish that downtown was 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 much bigger and it felt more robust and you know it it, it it there was more to do but basically 
downtown Salt Lake is a bunch of bars that you can go to if you like. Uh, you can see a concert here or there. You can see a, a you know an opera show or something, but there's not a lot happening down there. And then there's this little thing called the 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 Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints sitting down in the middle of the, the city. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, like this is not Ryan Smith doing anybody a favor. This is Ryan Smith doing himself a favor. This is Ryan Smith, in my opinion, being selfish and not wanting to find a way to do it with private money. Yeah. And that's what bothers me so much. Tanner Plummer, the Mormon church is saving their money for the second coming of Jesus, apparently. it's not. I, I don't want this to turn into a referendum on the church. But as I said, nobody owns more land. No private entity owns more land. I think the church is now the fifth largest private landowner and the largest owner of ranch and cattle land in this country. And I think they're the fifth. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I believe, is the fifth largest landowner in the entire country. And they own it all. Shopping centers, office towers. They own it all. Mm -hmm. They're not just square footage downtown or the land that their temples sit on. They own it all. And they are the largest landowner in the state of Utah, yeah. private landowner in the state of Utah. Because I want to say I was looking at it last night that you have a lot of public land. You have a lot of uh, Bureau of Land Management land. But as far as public versus private, the LDS Church is the largest public or, excuse me, private landowner in the state of Utah and the fifth largest in the entire country. Yeah. In yeah, the entire country. Let, let, let's tax the people of Utah. Let's just tax them to no end. And again, I am... My biggest issue, and this is where where the rubber meets the road, you are supposedly carrying the name of your creator. You're carrying it. Let's pretend it's a football. You're carrying it down the streets of Salt Lake City, walking right past the drug addicted, right past the homeless. We went to this. I told you this story. We went to the symphony two weeks ago. We quite literally walked by a guy an IV drug user laying on the street and one block down, what, what did we see? Another guy standing on a fence post, not really hiding, I guess, taking a leak on a fence post. All the money in the world, giving it to a billionaire to build his new arena, not doing anything. Oh, but we're going to revitalize downtown. Okay. Been but, saying it for so decades. Just, just out of curiosity, where, where are you going to bust those drug dealers and drug users to? Where are we going to, when all this gentrification's done, where are we going to push the homeless people to? They're just going to throw them up there in Ogden. Well, you know, because if, if we're building shiny new shit in downtown Salt Lake City, are you telling me that? Are you telling me you're just going to? You think that these rich dudes are just going to? They moved homeless people out of downtown Salt Lake City for the NBA All-Star Game. You think they're not going to do that when they open up their shiny new building? Yeah, they are going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to do that. They're just going to put it off on somebody else, dude. Like, come on. Uh, does Salt Lake City have a Kensington Street? I have no idea. I don't know. You know. Um, let's see. Arlington, Chris Karn in the chat this morning. Hello. Uh, the federal government is the largest landowner in the state. I get your point, but the Fed owns 60% of Utah. Different, different category. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a private entity that gets enormous tax benefits, by the way. Um, they are, it's not, I don't believe it's close based on the numbers I looked at last night. They are by far the largest private landowner in the state of Utah. Yeah. And I, and it it blows my I'm pretty sure they're the but fifth largest throw, in the country. Throw all that out. You, you, can we not just agree that the LDS Church in the state of Utah is powerful, and they could be making a difference if they wanted to make a they difference? They have enormous influence. Like so so cool, Chris. Like and I love you, dude. I'm not even criticizing you here, but cool, great. You're right. Sure, whatever. The point is, is that the church has the power to make a difference. I've dude, I've been hearing about revitalizing downtown for 10 years. This isn't new. This isn't some like right. new angle, bro. We've been hearing about 
oh, well, we got to revitalize. That's like a catchphrase in this state. Revitalize downtown Salt Lake City. Oh, my God, the bees are leaving downtown. How could they? How could they? We got to revitalize downtown. We, we've heard this before, man. This isn't new. The only thing that's new here is Ryan's going to get paid. That's the only thing that's new here. And then what's going to happen? Honest to God, what's going to happen? We'll probably get some calls and people are going to say we said some stuff. And the reality is we're the only ones saying stuff, man. And, and people don't like it, but it's the truth. It's what's happening. Yeah, it's frustrating. I, I, I we can. I'm going to continue to ask for for this dude, um, this rep Ryan Wilcox from Ogden. Um, he's the guy that's trying to create this fairway arena, uh, area investment for the baseball stadium. This is a huge mistake, huge mistake. And we've asked Governor Cox to come on. He said no repeatedly. Actually, what they do in the governor's office is very much what they do in Ryan Smith's office. We'll get back to you. Yeah, we'll we'll try to figure it out. We'll get back to you. You never hear from him. Yeah, I call that positively saying no. Yeah, they're saying no. There, there, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Dan McKay from Riverton, down the street from us, um, sponsored SB two seven two, um, which is. I just think, yeah, I think this whole thing is terrible. That's my opinion. I think it's brutal. I think it's the wrong thing to do, uh, which is very much what I would say. Uh, Tanner makes a good point for once. Salt Lake feels like Gotham. The town needs a Batman or a super soaker. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody. Somebody. Brandon Butler. Hello. Let's be honest. Pro sports owners have always wanted the people to pay for their new toys. The only difference is that in Utah, they don't give the people a chance to say no. Don't put it to a vote because it's going to be a no. It's going to be a no. Uh, no doubt. Giggity said pretty, sh uh, well, damn it, Tanner, rise up exactly. <laughs> UW fan Jim, pretty sure you said private land. I believe that's correct. But Chris is right. Um, <laughs> the super soaker is now our Batman. Is Tanner a plumber? The hero we need. <laughs> but not the one we deserve. Exactly right. Uh, I make a good point for once. You do. You always make good points. I'm just ball busting you. OG Gary, vote them out. But people won't vote in local elections. People will not vote. I'm telling you, man, your council person, your mayor, uh, your, your legislators, your state senators, you got to vote in your local elections. They're the ones that really, they, they're the, those are the guys stepping on your nuts, dude. I got to try to get people to understand that. You all want to vote for president? Okay, I agree that you should. But what they're doing in Washington is not nearly as impactful as what they're doing in, in, in Salt Lake City at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys you should be holding accountable. Your mayor, your council people. But we've gotten to a point now where we don't hold people accountable. Oh, you don't like that rule? Don't follow it. You don't want this to be applied to? Sue, don't follow it. Delay. Don't do it. Like, do, That's what we do now. That's what we do now. All right. Uh, speaking of which, can I bitch and moan about our internet problem, please? Because then we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> do we take the internet for granted? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. Tuesday night. You know, like grinding my ass off all day. I'm going to go hit some balls, right? Going to the range. Got some golf coming up this weekend. It's going to be the nicest weekend of 2024 so far this weekend here in Utah. Going to go to the range. Working on a new swing change with my guy, Darren Ingram, up at Canyons. How funny is it? We played River Oaks last night. Found a Canyons uh, Pro V1. Yeah. Just sitting on the fairway. Found a Canyons Pro V1. Anyway, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm at the range, like grinding a, a, a blister. Can hello. you can see that piece um, of black hello. tape yeah, right here? Hi. Yeah, blister okay. tape. Um, working on a swing change, whatever. Get in the car. Me and my wife were going to go to Costco in the grocery store that night. She's like, yeah, I can't do it. Uh, the internet's out. The internet's out. Okay, well, I pay a Wi-Fi company $10 a month for technical support. Call them. Oh, we're closed. <laughs> okay, let's call. Do I even say their name? 
Let's call CenturyLink. <laughs> that would have been faster. <laughs> uh, hey guys, we're out of internet. Yeah, we don't take phone calls. Chat with us. Okay. Um, okay, chat with you guys. Yeah, it's not our problem. It's your equipment problem. Sorry. Okay, call the call the equipment provider. <laughs> okay, pass the buck to the equipment provider. The equipment provider, let's get crazy. Dude. Answered the phone. Whoa. Eight o'clock PM Mountain Time. This company called Eero, who we use for our internal network here at the crib. Answers the phone, runs us through a whole whole check. Yep. Everything on everything's working great except your internet. Your internet is not getting to it to the to the router. Okay, let's go back to CenturyLink. Now it's 9:30, 9:45. And at this point you're probably already frustrated. Let's chat with <laughs> CenturyLink <laughs> again. That's right. I get with the technical support people on chat. What do you think the first thing the guy wants me to do is? Yeah, reset your router, man. Hey, bro, can you uh, hey, uh, hard reset your router? Unplug Mine. that thing. <laughs> That's soft, hard. <laughs> and so Dude. I finally, I said to the guy, we've done it five times. We've gone through technical support. We did all of your stuff because they send you this thing where they want you to, you know, they want you to reset up your router and you got to log in and hours of BS. Did all that. Hour later, finally, the guy's like, well, you know, it's this box on the outside of your house. He admits the internet signal is not getting from the hub outside to the router. Oh, so wait, it is your problem. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. So, but but we got to this point after two hours of nonsense. More than that. More than that. Hours of nonsense. So the guy's like, I need you to go outside. And I need you to reset this bot, the fiber, the fiber point. We need you to reset that box. It's on the outside of your house. I said, well, I'm pretty sure it's not, man. Like I've never seen this before. Do a Google image search of what this box is supposed to look like. Oh, I've seen that. It's on the far side. I live in a, uh, a townhouse, a row of townhouses, right? It's on the far side on somebody else's outside wall. So here I am, late at night, in the dark, walking around in somebody's yard with my iPhone flashlight on, <laughs> hoping not to get capped, murked, pew-pewed. Yeah. Find the box. It's got a hexagon lock on it. Can't open it. Go back, chat with the guy. He's like, yeah, you can. You can open it. Go ahead. I said to him, there's uh, a hexagon lock on it. And he's going through this whole thing like, hey, here's what, what you do. Here's, and I'm like, hey, I finally said in all capital letters, I can't open it. It's got a hexagon lock on it. It is locked. And he's like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I'm not sure. <laughs> and you want to hear the worst answer you've ever gotten from this guy? that you've been banging with now for the better part of four and a half, five hours. Oh, Hey, that's fine. I'll reset it from here. That's what fucking takes me to fuck off. Dude. Then why are you having like, me out in the we... wilderness? Why didn't you just dude? He hit one button, fixed it. Why didn't you, why then? Why did so you? I said, yeah, dude. It's the worst thing in the world. And everybody's like, why don't you get Google Fiber, Monty? Why don't you get Comcast? Because it's not available. It's not available where I live. And frankly, it's all the same. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. It's all the same. But the bottom line here is not how crappy CenturyLink is. And oh, trust me, they are crappy. But we take the internet for granted, dude. We 100% take Wi-Fi for granted. Hundo P. It is, it is remarkable to me how much we take this for granted. Mm -hmm. I want it. And I just, I am amazed at how annoying it is not to have internet service in the house. So, so what, 
What was I unable to do? Yeah. Uh, Alexa didn't work. The TV didn't work. Uh, none of our smart stuff worked. None of our ring cameras worked. The f- you like obviously the phone worked, but in your house, I don't have great service in my house. Can't show prep. Can't do a show. Can't, like nothing. Nothing. And then you hyenas are like, Monty, why aren't you doing a show, man? Is there going to be a sh- no show today? What happened? What it's as if as if we you know just decided not to do a show. Uh, I, I it is it is so unbelievably <laughs> so guy over here goes, annoying dude what was it it must have been like 11, 11 o'clock or whatever it 11 was. o'clock and and i can tell you're all pissed off and i didn't see the text until i was getting up for to to come over and do the show but <laughs> there was a text you sent where you're like you're like f it f it i'm done dealing with CenturyLink. they said it would be done in the morning and i don't trust them like well, Dude. the 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 frustrating thing is that you get into these situations where you pay people. Yeah, like I pay a Wi-Fi company for technical this is support. Ridiculous. And they're like, "Yeah, you're not paying for technical support." We uh, he said something about changing their terms of. So you don't pay for technical support anymore. If you want us to come out, we have to charge you for that. Well, what's my? Because I pay him ten dollars a month. Where's my ten dollars a month going? You're leasing the Eero equipment in your house. So you know what I did? I bought my own Eros and I canceled my contract with those dudes. I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. Like it's the biggest. It, mm, it's, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Like I just don't understand the point of having a home internet company if you can't help people with their internet when they need you. You know, like what is what is the point? Uh, Dakota Tubbs, Jake was punishing Boss Frog for not paying his dues yesterday. Was a warning shot for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, Boss Frog was in collections, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, uh, Mike Smith. I looked at the Monty Show Twitter account to see if the show was off. I figured you would announce it. I just missed it. Yeah, I guess. I was so pissed. I'd have been pissed too, dude. Hundred percent, yeah. And like, I'm trying to, you know, we we do. You guys know we do like uploads, like highlights, like cutouts from the show. So if you just want to listen to this or that or whatever, and so I'm like trying to do it Tuesday night, and couldn't do it. Internet just goes out. I'm like sitting there resetting the router like five times, and it just doesn't work. Gumby says, just tether your smartphone to your router. But that's not. I'm paying for gig speed. Yeah. It, bro. I know how to like. I'm the thing that bothers me is I pay you execute do it do it do it and I I, I, for the record I don't have great cell service in my house yeah so yeah I just cannot I can't even imagine it I can't I I pay so many people so I bought a new car right I I bought a I bought a really nice BMW yeah Another right, I bought example. I bought a really good BMW, and I get paint protection, PPF. And what that is is it's a it's an invisible film that goes on your the front face of your car, the hood of your car, your lights, your mirror caps, and your windshield, so that when you get hit by rocks, because they're building a new stadium downtown, I'll stop. When you get rock <laughs> chips <laughs> or things that hit your car, it doesn't damage your paint. It was thousands of dollars. Yeah. They apply it and they did a terrible job. Like the mirror caps were peeling off. The front end had big bubbling on the grill. The hood had little bubbles on it. Okay, we take it back. We take it back. They fix it supposedly. They didn't fix it. Yesterday we go to pick the car up. We're at BMW. And it's just brutal. My wife is looking at the hood. Like the paint protection film is peeling off the the edge of the hood. And so the guy's like, all right, I'll have my guy come back. I'm like, no, you need to have him come back now. Like who's the who who's the person? And it turns out that this particular store contracts um, with a paint protection firm that does all their upgrades. BMW actually contracts with them. It's a private company that's now housed at each dealership. So the guy comes out and he's like, well, what is your expectation? 
And I said, it's, I paid this much for my car. My expectation is perfection. Perfection. Like you can see on the mirror caps. Yeah. The line where they cut the piece of film. It's really poorly done. You should be able to look at it and not know it's there. That's why it's invisible. You should be able to look at your windshield and not see it. Look at your mirror. And the guy's like, yeah, we let you down this time. I straight up said to the guy, you didn't let me down this time. I'm never going to, pro- I'm probably never buying another car from you. And and when I do, if I do, because they're the best BMW dealer here. If I do, I will not be buying paint protection from you guys. I will go to Big O Tires and get it done. Yeah. I will go to my guy, Ryan, at Big O Tires and American Fork and get it done. Because when I paid you, you didn't do the job. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, man, we let you down. By no, the way, no. what are you going to do to compensate for time since I drove my ass down Which here? is what I told the guy. I said, you know, I'm not really even upset that I paid for this and you didn't do it right because you're going to do it right. Yeah. Because I will not take the car until it's perfect. The biggest issue is it takes me at that time of day, 41 minutes to come to you and go back home. And I've now done this. This is the third time I've had to do this. And nobody's compensating me for my time. And you didn't even think about the time it took. So to their credit, what did the BMW dealer do? They gave us a loaner and the guy said, you're going to keep the car. I'm going to keep your car. It takes about an hour to do paint protection. Does not take long. But you know what else these Jamokes did? They put on the paint protection and immediately washed the car. Idiots. Which you are not supposed to do. It ruins the paint protection because you have to let that film bake into the paint. You have to let it settle. Which is why ultimately it was bubbling. And I just had my car detailed on Sunday. They washed it and left water spots all over it. It's like they didn't even dry it. Like all over my exhaust tips, all over the back of the car, the roof, the hood, the windows, like the the passenger windows had water spots all over them. Yeah. And so the guy, the guy from the dealership and the guy from the paint shop are two different dudes. The guy at the paint shop's like, yeah, we let you down. Okay, great. The guy at the dealerships, yeah, I'm, I, it said to me, pulled me aside and was like, I'm mortified. He said, we're going to get you a loaner. And then when your car's ready, we're going to bring it to you. You don't, you're not going to come back. We're going to deliver it to you. I'm going to keep your car all weekend long because the car will be done today. The paint pro will be done today. He said, once it's, once it's done, you have to wait 72 hours before you can wash it. He said, it's going to sit here for 72 hours. Then we're going to fully detail it inside and out. And then I'm going to have it inspected by myself and the the general manager of the dealership. And when we determine it's perfect, we're going to drive it back out to your house. There you go. I would expect that from the dealership, knowing what we paid for that car. Yeah. And that's what we well, got. They know what you paid for the car too. But the paint protection guy, I'm just like, good Lord, man. Well, like, what are we doing? Well, and what's wild is when you have a partnership with a dealer like that, I understand you're doing a lot of volume, but you should have certain standards built into your process, right? Like it should never be a thing where, where you're able to walk out to a customer standing at their car and see your film peeling up from the car because you did such a bad job like that. Yeah. It should be in, it should be prevented in the process by which you install. Yes. Uh, Kim Coulter. Hello. Today is another great day at the masters. Is the masters the best event in sports? Yeah, you're damn right. I am watching the masters. Today. I think it's close. Uh, honorary starter, Jack Gary and Tom T off in 22 minutes. Yeah. The rain and wind, the wind today at Augusta is going to be wild. Yeah. But the rain has finally stopped. So, yes, we have an on in the This background. is a two, three under winter type tournament, I feel like. I agree. Goji, Gary, I got CenturyLink, and literally a few days later, my service goes down, and I had to call them, and they fixed it. Can't wait for Google Fiber in West Jordan, dude. I'm with you. Stepanic, hello. I didn't miss anything. It seems like every day a new doctor wants to see me. It gets overwhelming at times, but I'm doing okay. Oh, I hope you're all right, man. That's right. You've been going through it a little bit with your health. So I hope you're okay. Uh, John Dry, hello. The former clear layer from tech, I believe. Okay. Cheerleader. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mike Smith, wait a minute. You got a loner? Ha ha, the truth is out there. Get it, RJC loner phone. Apple doesn't. <laughs> it's my guy. Uh, OG Gary, Ricky is winning it. Well, today would be a, you know who's got a legitimate chance with this wind and weather? Mm-hmm. Rory McElroy who is the number one scoring player in bad weather conditions, Rory McIlroy. And it's going to be very interesting to see. 
He's in my prize picks today, prizepicks.com. Uh, download the app, use the promo code Monty to get 100% deposit matching. Uh, real quick, because we are way late. But uh, I have Rory McElroy less than 72 strokes today. That's a lot of stroking. Yeah, it's a lot, dude. You know, when you're stroking that much, you know, it's... Dakota it's Tubbs. Dude. Did Monty just admit that he has a loner? I did. You got to get stroked. Damn it, Mike, you beat me to it. Yes. And look, our, uh, our JC loner phone is if on cue. Customer service is the worst. I have zero expectations. Finally, something I agree with you on. Honestly, I'd start stroking, guys. Mike Smith, stroking. <laughs> Mike, yes, you would. Yes, you would. <laughs> the Monty Strogrum. <laughs> Off the top of my head, that's the best I could do. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Uh, the Monty Show, presented by our good friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business. Love those guys. Uh, tomorrow is Giving Friday. We won't be here. Not because the internet's wait, 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 wait. out. I will be here. <laughs> I will be here. Certain guys who are just so thirsty for dames. Hmm, you got to get stroked. Won't be here. Honestly, I'd start stroking, guys. There are people on this show, and I'm not going to name names. There are people on this show who will not be here. Macaque. They will be. They will be. <laughs> They will be in the desert getting serviced. You do you. Stay hard. You do you. We'll be back on Monday. Let's ride. On the Monty <laughs> Show. <laughs> Presented by The Advocates. Theadvocates.com. The best injury attorneys in the business. Until Monday, keep stroking, Jake. Keep stroking, Jake. <laughs> <laughs>